DOIers, what's up? Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thanks for watching. We're talking preload on an Alpha 1 Gen 1 Outdrive Mercruiser engine. First thing we will do, I cleaned up again the retainer nut and I've got this spanner wrench in the vise. I will carefully insert that. Next, I'm going to grab the oiled up parts and I'm going to apply them exactly how they are in the schematic. Here is the carrier for the oil seal as well as the lubricated O-ring. And from here, we've got the nut washer, gear, and bearing, as well as our brand new U-joint assembly and shaft. And I'm going to scoot the bearing over. Slide the shaft up. And this part right here slides right onto the oil seal. And make sure that's flush. Grab the gear, rotate it until you match up the splines, just like that. Grab the washer and make sure you have the side of the washer that says nut facing up, in our case, toward the ceiling. And then we'll grab our nut and hand tighten it. And now that that is hand tightened, it's not going to fall out of the vise or spanner wrench. We will now grab the 15 16 socket and carefully tighten it. And it's easy to push up to give you better leverage. And as you can see, not sure if you can see it, but we've still got a long way before the nut touches the washer. So baby steps, just go slow. If you over tighten this, lights out, game over. You will have to start over. And that is not what we want to do. Now to a close up at where we are now, if I push up on the lower yoke and shaft, you'll notice there is no more space in between the nut and washer. Now it's time to grab our inch pound torque wrench and check this thing out. This is a zero to 30, which is extremely precise for our project. And that's why we purchased this. And down below in the comment section, as well as description section is a link to a video where we give a full explanation and review or demonstration on using this tool. And I'm going to zero this out, the orange needle on zero, as you see there. And in our case, you'll notice zero to five and a lot of white markings in between. Because we bought these zero to 30, and again, this is extremely precise, the white markings indicate a half inch count. So zero, one half, one, one and one half, two, two and a half is that first bold white line that's longer than the others and all the way up to five. And I wanna take it to eight because we have brand new gears. And this is extremely important. In the event that you are using your old gears, you will preload four to five pounds or inch pounds. However, because we are using brand new gears and bearings as shown here, the Mercruiser manual calls for six to eight inch pounds to be set on the preload for the brand new set. So this little blue needle is a memory needle and peak torque. And I'm going to spin this to eight. That white marking that's bold in between five and 10, that's the 7.5, so just shifting it up one more is eight. Using the long screwdriver, I will insert that through the yoke and spin this until it is locked in place. And in between the carriers, you have this little spacer. And what I wanna do is make sure it is perfectly positioned and there is an indent in between each carrier the entire way around. So as I tighten it, it will properly seat. And again, a little at a time to ensure you do not over tighten this. And when measuring the rolling resistance, make sure you take that screwdriver out. And right now, it is at about one and a half. And it's at about two. And you will have to continue this process several times until you get the perfect reading. And as you tighten this, 
spin your bearings and that will help lubricate the additional bearings down below and move that gear oil. And another close-up view, I do want to show you where I am inserting that screwdriver. Down below, you have a grease fitting or point, and you have an additional grease fitting right inside there. The way I insert this is in the middle, so it does not come in contact with either of those fittings. And as you tighten this, again, go very slow, baby steps, you do not want to over tighten it. But once this brand new washer begins to compress, it is tight and it might actually make you think that you're over tightening it. But again, rely on your inch pound torque wrench. And a quick recap on the actual bearings, this inner spacer, it's very important that you ensure that spacer stays centered in between the two bearing carriers. And the instructions show a pictorial image of a clamp wrapped around this bearing portion and carriers and screwed tight to alleviate this inner spacer from getting offset. And if you've got a clamp, definitely use it. Unfortunately, in our case, we don't have one handy. So as we move through this project, we will go very slow and be very precise to again, make sure this inner spacer is perfectly centered in between the carriers. And right now it's at about four and a half. Let me make sure as it comes around, I can read it upright. Yep, just a little bit more to go. And again, spin your bearings as you work through this project. And I had to do this a couple more times, again, ensuring that that inner spacer is properly centered. And I know I mentioned I was gonna take it up to eight, but it's at seven right now, and I am perfectly happy with this. And to properly get your reading on your inch pound torque wrench, grab the bearings or carriers and that spacer and carefully rotate. DIYers, that is it. And that is the finished product. And what I'll do is move it to the bench. I wanna talk about that inner spacer or ring. With the assembly on the bench, again, this is a press fit bearing on a larger diameter gear. This is a new design and the old or OEM original gear is slightly machined in smaller diameter, which allows the bearing set to basically slide right off. And I can take this gear and basically push the bearings off of it, as you can see. Again, this is a slip fit design compared to the new design, which is a press fit Larger diameter machine cut on the gear does not allow the bearings to just slide right off. Hence, that's where they get their name, the press fit. Now, this little inner ring or spacer comes with your new bearing set. And that's because the company selling the bearing set thinks you're going to install the new bearing on the old gear. And if you did that, you will need this small inner spacer. And I think it's right there. You can basically pop that off. And with the old gear set and bearing, you put everything together on the new assembly or spline shaft and you torque it down to 80 pounds. And I believe that comes to a perfect four to five inch pounds on this little gadget here. However, if you are installing your new bearings on a larger and new design gear that has to be pressed, it is highly important. Do not use this spacer. And DIYer scrolling above right now is a video that we dive deep into the comparison between the two, the original gear and bearings, as well as the new design. I highly recommend checking that out. It is very important to know the difference when setting your preload. Hopefully this helps DIYers. Hey, below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. And we are going to continue our project. And also scrolling above right now is the link to the next steps where we pick up right where we left off. Hope to see you there.